Welcome back. We are here at the fabulous Las Vegas at the WPPI conference, and I am here with the incredible Tony. Hey, He's dude. from Perth. How are you doing? So nice to meet you, Tony. Likewise. How are you loving being in Vegas? Uh, well, it's my 17th time to Vegas, so oh. I kind of feel like I know my way around, and I always enjoy it. There's plenty to do. There's plenty to do. How long? You, so you currently live in Perth as well? I live in Perth, Australia. So yeah, you're about as far as you can get from here. I was just going to say, what's the flight time on that? Uh, well, the, the travel time was 36 hours. The flight time's about 24. Wow. Yeah. Not all in one hit. I got you. Okay, so you are a fine arts photographer. Am I saying that right? Talk I'm to me a, about what I'm a what photographer you... okay. who shot a thousand weddings okay. and has probably done five thousand portraits and commercial. And over that time, I've evolved into a photographer who shot landscape. Oh. And then that moved me into an area where I wanted to become more exclusive and in a very competitive area, which landscape is professional, amateur, anybody shoots it. Yeah. I moved towards fine art and I didn't choose to go to fine art. Fine art decided that what I was doing was called fine art and that's coming from curators and galleries wow. so fine art shows you yeah i think so because you know in the early days i started off thinking okay i want to do fine art mm -hmm. then i learned very quickly that that's not fine art it's just pretty pictures mm. and as i got more involved in the art side of things and with the galleries i understood that there was far more to it right. it's not just whether it's printed on metallic or framed nicely or printed on a matte art paper or hanging in a gallery it's got to be more to it and I began to understand that the fine art aspect of it is more to do with what you're trying to say with your pictures. Mm. So rather than an image being a picture of a beautiful lady such as yourself, or a picture <laughs> of a beautiful scene or something like that, it's more about an, an idea. It's more about a discussion or a, a comment. Yeah. yeah. And you're just making a, a social comment or you're making a comment on the aesthetic, the design or the narrative. Right. Yeah, because we're going to put some photos here. Um, I've seen some of your stuff. It's stunning. I mean, what happens with photography is we get caught up in the rules and things like that. So a traditional landscape photographer might look at my work and say, there's too much saturation, there's too much this, there's too much that. But someone walking into a gallery who's looking to buy something beautiful, interesting that, yes. that they resonate with, they're not looking at that. They're looking at shapes, color, texture, form, meaning, narrative. Uh, spirit, energy, they're looking at all of that and they're going, this one talks to me. The photographers are coming to an exhibition gallery, I know, because they come in and they'll be walking up and looking at the picture and, you know, he shot this on that and yeah. it's a bit... Whereas the, 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 the people who like the work, they'll stand back and they'll look at it and they go, oh my God, that talks to me, that's so beautiful, that's so this, that's so that. And isn't or, that what we're looking for in the world today? Like something that, that moves. So how, you know, when you get inspired by something, like what are you looking for, for to be inspired? Do you go specific places that inspire you or are you just kind of like open to inspiration wherever you go? I think it's the second one. I think you can go places which can increase your chances of being inspired. But I think ultimately it's a, it's a, it's a state of mind yeah. that you stay, you stay open. You don't think you know it all. You don't, you know, I, I know so little. The more I've got to know, and I've been doing photography for 35 years, wow. I know how much I don't know now. Yes. And that scares me, because yeah. I'm not going to be around for a thousand years, unfortunately. Well, you know, no, technology, but maybe I'll come back in AI. But um, I, just, I just keep my eyes open and I stay curious, and that's the key. I stay curious. I say that all the time. Well, there you I, go. Think, I think our younger generation, they are just not curious enough, and that keeps them stuck in their mindset. I agree with you, and well, I think that, that overflows into so many industries. That's right. There's always something you don't know, and if you stay open to that, stay curious, that's, that's where you will grow, and that's where I find inspiration. It could be watching a child ride a skateboard down the beach. It could be um, watching a bird in the sky. It could be walking around here looking at the carpet, which I don't particularly like. Um, uh, you, could, you could do something with it if you had to, right? Yeah, because, you know, look, I look at your top and the greens, and I see the lines in it, and I like the color. And there's, there's something everywhere you look, there's something that you could look at and go, wow, that makes me think of this. And I think one of the biggest keys for me that... I won't say drives my success because that's assuming, but that I think is behind the progress I make yeah. is that I'm very good at jumping laterally in my mind. So by jumping laterally, I mean you're thinking of this, but then you can relate it to something totally unrelated and say, well, if it works there, what if I tried some of those principles over here and see what it does to that? So you look at a Van Gogh or you look at a Picasso, then I look at my aerial work and I think, well, if Picasso could do that, why can't I do this? I'm not saying I'm Picasso, I'd like to be, but one day. Um, preferably not dead to be famous. Right. But 
Um, I look at it and I go, well, why not play with colour? Why not add contrast? Why not change this to suit? The thing with my work that a lot of people don't realise is that what you see is exactly what I photographed. I don't put two pictures together. I don't composite. I don't do things like that. What I do is I bring out of that image or that file the things I want you to notice the most and I reduce the things I don't want you to be distracted by. So things like texture, color, things like yeah. that. Yeah, so, if, it, so if, I was, if I looked at something and I was enamored by the color, I might bring the color out. Yeah. Or if I was enamored by the textual qualities, I might bring the texture out and I use the skills to do that. That I think, you know, uh, I'm not a photographer or videographer myself, but obviously my husband is, and I think being around creative photographers and videographers, you guys just see the world in a very, very different way, and it is so inspiring to see how you see something that we think is so, you know what I mean? So what's still on the bucket list to capture? Is there a place or a thing or an activity or uh, an object that maybe you're like, I would really love to do this? I think... Um uh, that's a really hard question because I don't... I try to hit you with the, you know, get you thinking here. <laughs> I, have some, I have some goals. Uh, yeah. I'd love to do a sellout show in somewhere like New York. That'd be amazing, or Paris. Yes. Uh, I'd like to see my work represented in different mediums. So, uh, you know, we're looking into things like um, buildings and, and having outdoor panels, you know, massive screens and things like that. Uh, I'm writing, I'm also, a, I like to write and uh, I'm writing a children's book based around a project that I did where I flew around the Australian continent over a month uh, and photographed the outside of the continent as an art project. So I want to write about that journey as an adventure that kids can look at and say, well, you can still explore, you can still adventure. So I've got those things. In terms of my art, I'd like to become more tuned into producing images that are about, that can evoke emotion and evoke responses that have nothing to do with the content and everything to do with what the content is hiding. Because if we take a picture of a couple at a wedding, which a lot of people at this conference would do, we're not photographing a person in a suit and a person in a dress or two people in dresses or whatever it happens to be. We're photographing love, we're photographing connection, we're photographing... A journey. Journey, we're photographing fear, anticipation, uh, excitement. We're photographing these things and none of these things exist in a figurative sense. If you have a photograph of a grandfather with a little grandson holding his finger and we can look at it and go, oh my gosh, look at the connection between them. Which is the connection pixel? It's not the fingers holding. There's more to it. There's something about the whole image. That's kind of an inkling into what I think fine art in photography can be. So with my work, I'm doing it with landscapes and I fall in love with the shapes, the colours, the textures and the forms and I want people to fall in love with it, with it I fell in love with. So if you think of an... Inspiring emotion, essentially. Well, you're trying to bring that out of people by talking about language, not just the language of sight, but the language of feeling and the energy that goes behind all that. And that's, that's a challenge to be able to work with because it's not obvious. So that's my challenge. It's not obvious, but I also think that people are not in touch with their own feelings. So then if you... I've noticed that you know, people say, oh, what is, this, what is this painting or what is this... Photograph, uh, photograph make you feel. And a lot of people don't even know how they feel in general. So then when they try to do that, so I think what's amazing what you're doing is you're really pushing the boundaries of trying to understand how to get people to tap into yes. how this can make you feel and be okay feeling that, right? Well, well exactly. And, you know, I've had... Even if it makes you feel scared, that's okay. You, like Some people will be afraid to say that, yes. right? And, you know, having an exhibition, I've had it happen... I've, quite a few times now and it's, yeah. it's such a warm feeling that watching somebody walk around and stand in front of one of my pictures and then get very emotional. Now that's something I never thought I could achieve just through pictures. No, no, I mean, you get brides would come in and but that's very subjective, it's them, it's their wedding day. But for someone to come in and look at a landscape or an abstract that they don't really know what they're looking at. That inspired you and now. That's right. And they look at it and you can see, and even to the point where you'll have partners and she might look at it and be in tears, which has happened, and the husband will say, what's wrong? I don't get it, right? <laughs> and he will say, I don't get it. And she goes, what, can't you see it? Yeah, don't you understand? You it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get I it. I stand there and I go, <laughs> I'm going, oh my God, that's great. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Oh, I that. And so that's, that's what I'm always looking to achieve is not everybody loves everything. And someone once said to me as an artist, you don't need to please 8 billion people on the planet. You just got to please a dozen that want to buy your yeah. pictures, yeah. preferably more. 
Uh, and if they appreciate your style and your language, and I think yeah. that's at the core of it, we all have our own language. And as a photographer, the camera, the medium, such as the papers and the prints and the inks and yeah. the digital uh, expression, all of that is the way um, I say what I feel about what I see. So. That's what we try to do. Thank you so my much. You, oh me. my God, you just, I'm inspired just listening to you talk about the things that inspire you. Like, this is so cool. Uh, thanks for coming all the way from Australia. That, you know, our just bucket list, just for this interview. I mean, you guys are like getting a VIP experience. No, seriously, thank you. I hope my you had pleasure. a wonderful show. I will. We've got a bit more to do. So we That's right. Tomorrow, and then I've got a few days in LA. So, oh, I love that. yeah. Fantastic. LA yeah. is great. Taking advantage of the whole West Coast here. I will. I was always. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you guys Thanks. so much for being here, and we'll be right back. Thank you.